What's good, you two? Welcome back to the Brown Gen and Happy New Year. There was a major exploit that happened with the Orbit Bridge, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about what the impact was and if there's anything that you should do in your strategy or any of the tokens that you hold. Now, before we get into it, just remember this is not financial advice. You got to do your own research. So, just jumping right into it, yesterday, Right before we rung in the new year, some hackers went in. They sort of took advantage of a massive exploit in the Orbit Bridge, taking out eighty-two million dollars. And um, sort of somebody had posted on Twitter, drawing attention to the exploit, saying that there were a ton of money coming out of the protocol. And then we got Orbit Chain coming in, talking about that access, saying they were going to. Get an update, and if you follow them, there's a ton of updates. You know, this is nothing new. We saw the same verbiage come out from Harmony when about a year and a half ago, hackers stole a hundred million dollars from the Harmony blockchain bridge, causing a ton of anguish. And I'm going to talk a bit about the differences between what happened with Harmony and what happened with Orbit. Now, the first thing I want to say here is number one. As much as possible, you truly want to avoid putting non-native assets or holding on to a lot of non-native assets. Holding Ethereum on the Ethereum mainnet or an Arbitrum is fine; it's a native token. However, if you're holding Ethereum on the Avalanche chain, you're not truly holding Ethereum. You're holding an IOU for Ethereum, which is why the Ethereum is typically tagged with a prefix or a suffix, and then the bridges function as an IOU gate. So you bridge. So, so let's say you want to take Ethereum to Avalanche. You would send Ethereum across the bridge. At the bridge, they hold Av they hold the Ethereum token, and they give you an IOU. You can trade that IOU just like you would Ethereum. Because somebody will eventually be able to redeem it for Ethereum back at the bridge. What happens is if someone exploits the bridge, takes the funds out of the bridge, you no longer have that Ethereum sitting there in the same amount. So maybe instead of 150 million Ethereum sitting there, you have 70 million. So that means all the IOUs are worth significantly less. And what typically happens is the first people to notice that. Will go in, redeem those IOUs, and claim their tokens for the smallest haircut possible, making it unfortunate for anyone else who finds out after the fact. Hey, you know you're you have this token. There isn't much to be redeemed for. You get a sort of bank rush of sorts. So I try to avoid this as much as possible. Yes, I love liquidity pools, but I tend to use liquidity pools. Of the native assets, not of bridged assets. And yes, I do have some bridged assets on some blockchains, but it's never a significant amount because I don't want to deal with a bridge getting hacked. You could do everything right. I put a video out yesterday talking about how you can create an impenetrable fortress for your crypto. And despite doing all of that, if you were to sort of have non-native assets. And the bridge gets hacked, which is out of your control, and it seems to happen frequently. Well, then you're out of luck, and I want to make sure that doesn't happen to you. So just keep that in mind. Now, we saw this happen with Harmony, and I'm going to talk a bit about the differences in a second. But when this happened, everything related to the Orbit chain or the Orbit bridge, in this case, the prefix is an O, basically. They took massive haircuts. You can see here,、um, we don't have、uh, USD. That's not Orbit on here, so I did not want to use.、Uh, I wanted to use something that was pretty much stable at the time, which was Jewel token. And we went from, you know, a, a Bitcoin being worth about one hundred and thirty-five thousand thousand Jewel token, all the way down to eighty-seven thousand Jewel token, because. Once again, it took a significant haircut, lost forty percent of the value, and same thing with Ethereum. Went from seven thousand something, seven、um, thousand something Jewel, all the way down to four thousand eight hundred. 
in a matter of minutes, probably like an hour or so, this haircut happened. We saw the same thing happen with Harmony, where the asset prices went down by 80 to 90 percent. Some people use this as an opportunity to gamble and say, hey, I think they'll get back to peg. Let me buy it and, you know, ride that 2x, 3x. In this case of Harmony, it would have been a 7x. Spoiler, it didn't happen. They never ended up getting that sorted out. The, uh, the so-called money that they lost, the $100 million, as far as I know, they've never recovered it despite everything they were saying they were doing. And yes, Juul has gone up about 10% in the last little while, going up to 43, listen, this is Canadian, but um, it's around like 33, 32 cents, still up 10%. So when we do see a bit of recovery over here, which I will show you on the screen, it is not that big. But what I will say is it's not just a jewel appreciation going from 4,000 something all the way up to six. It has also a bit to do with Orbit's communications and sort of people's belief that they're going to be made whole. So people are willing to take that on now. Since the last few hours, it's dropped significantly. I'm not sure if there's an update. But what I will say is for those of you who are watching, who are in DeFi kingdoms, the reason you don't have to worry is the team went through this a year and a half ago. It literally happened at the worst time possible, right? We had all of that FUD surrounding Frisky Fox. And right after that, something completely out of our control, a black swan event, basically, um, that the Harmony Bridge got hacked and a ton of the assets got destroyed. And the treasury for DFK, I believe, was mainly on Harmony assets. They learned their lesson big time. I'm super proud of them. Um, you know, Bolon sort of put this out there. You know, Orbit is the largest bridge provider for Clayton, which is the Serendale network. So Serendale has suffered, unfortunately, two bridge hacks, not to do with anything with DFK, has more to do with our partners. And that I'm so happy to see that it doesn't impact the DFK chain and they don't have DFK assets hosted by the Orbit Bridge because they had the sort of foresight, as Dreamer says at the top here, the majority of the DFK treasury is managed slash maintained on Ethereum and DFK chain, which has no exposure to the hack. Now they are accessing options with impacted assets like the, the BTC, the Ethereum, the USDT. And what they did do is really um, pause all of the liquidity pool withdrawal fees. So if you weren't, if you were outside of one block, you could literally, you know, buy in, or you could have literally withdraw all of your, um, orbit or any of your liquidity pools right now and not get destroyed with the like 8% fee. And the reason for this is they wanted people, if they wanted to, to take that to the bridge and liquidate it into something else right away. Now, They've also disincentivized those pools. So when you go back to DeFi Kingdoms, I wonder if I still have it open here. Um, I won't be able to do it. Sorry, it's uh, zoomed in too much. But basically, if you go in, you, you won't find it unless you go to the archive pools. So what I'm really happy about this for is the team went through this ordeal about a year ago, having or a year and a half ago, having gone through it, having all those pains, and they had the foresight to protect their own funds and the community's funds by placing that treasury in a safe place. I think Ethereum mainnet, while we may not like it as much because of the ridiculous gas fees, super pumped to see that it's stored there. And then on DFK chain, which is their own subnet on Avalanche. So the two takeaways here, number one, no impact really to DFK as a whole. Uh, they're going to figure out what's going on, but nothing that would impact the roadmap. Number two, um, you know, please do not, if you can avoid it, don't hold non-native assets. Yes, I know we don't want to like use so many different chains. At this point, that's the better solution if you need to have tokens elsewhere. You don't want to have, you know, all the same sort of bridge tokens on one chain for convenience. The reality is in this space, whenever you pick convenience over security, you'll always get hurt. I hope you found value in this video. Super pumped, super bullish about DFK and what else is going on with it. If you like the video, make sure you like the, like the video, so, uh, share the video. And if you found value, subscribe to the channel. Love to see it. We'll be pumping out way more content. 
DeFi kingdoms, crypto stocks in 2024. Super excited to bring that to you. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video.